Welcome everyone. In this video, we will be continuing our discussions on ISO 31000, which is the standard for risk management. In particular, we will be talking about uh, Monte Carlo simulation and uh, sensitivity analysis, which are powerful tools uh, often used uh, for risk assessment in uh, commercial software, including uh, Primo Vero P6 and uh, MS Project. Here is uh, the systematic approach uh, prescribed in ISO 31000. As uh, you can see, uh, we have risk identification, analysis, and evaluation listed under uh, risk assessment, and that will be the focus of this video. Terminology first, uh, we talked about risk scenario as an event with um, adverse impact on uh, project objectives, uh, which can be on time completion or um, on cost completion of uh, the project. Uh, risk assessment is uh, a useful tool for quantifying the likelihood and the consequences of uh, identified risks. Previously, uh, in uh, videos we had before, we talked about uh, uh, program evaluation and review technique, or in short, PERT. Uh, the underlying uh, statistical distribution that we assumed uh, in PERT uh, was beta distribution, uh, which is uh, to some extent similar to uh, Gaussian or normal distribution. And Z statistics were uh, developed uh, and tables were used uh, to quantify uh, probabilities um, for different uh, events. P50 uh, is um, associated with the median uh, of the distribution and 50% uh, of the area under the curve is associated with uh, P50 or median. When we move away, uh, for example, to the right-hand side of uh, the median, uh, we have larger areas under the curve. As an example, when we move three standard deviation away uh, from P50, 99.7% of uh, uh, our population is represented there. In Monte, in Monte Carlo simulation, we have more liberty to use other distributions uh, than beta distribution. Uh, uh, it is uh, possible to use a range of continu continuous distributions, including triangle, uniform, or paired uh, log normal uh, distributions, and also uh, discrete uh, distributions. So Monte Carlo simulation uh, uh, is a useful method when we have uh, a combination of different uh, distributions in a complex problem at hand. Uh, it is important to understand the, the difference between population and sample when using such a technique. Population is the totality of the uh, scenarios or examples that you are considering. And then uh, in Monte Carlo simulation, we choose random samples of that uh, population. Uh, understandably, when you have a larger sample or a larger number of uh, simulations, it can better represent the population itself. Here is a, a very uh, simple uh, example of tossing a coin and uh, how uh, the sample size uh, can grow by uh, tossing uh, more and more. Uh, the first uh, graph on the top uh, left corner shows uh, the binomial distribution when there is only one toss of the coin and uh, there is a 50% chance of uh, having heads. Uh, so 50% chance of uh, not having uh, heads or uh, zero success, and 50% chance of getting uh, one head or one success. The binomial distribution, there, uh, there are two tosses of coin, and uh, the possibility of getting two heads uh, or success uh, is 25 percent and uh, then uh, getting two tails if it is a fair coin uh, having the same chance of 25 percent and uh, the largest probability is associated to getting one 
head and one tail, so 50 percent. Uh, then uh, down the bottom we have uh, binomial distribution resulted by five uh, tosses of uh, coin and ten. And uh, you can see the larger uh, uh, becomes our sample size, the more accurate is uh, uh, the representation of uh, uh, the population. So, uh, confidence is one uh, important aspect uh, we should uh, consider. Uh, size of the sample plays an important role in the level of confidence that we can achieve. The larger is the sample, uh, results in uh, the higher confidence that we can have. Another important aspect is uh, the variance of uh, sample. And if we have many outliers, or noise uh, in our data, we need larger samples to uh, achieve um, a good uh, level of confidence. There are important uh, uh, concepts in the statistics uh, that uh, we should uh, know. Uh, first of all, probability density function or PDF, uh, which uh, is uh, uh, related to continuous random variables and uh, it is um, uh, shown in this uh, figure. For discrete uh, variables uh, we can have probability mass function or PMF and using those two uh, we can find uh, the probability of any random variables uh, between two values and uh, how that probability is calculated uh, it is um, uh, the area under the curve uh, between the two points of interest uh, that uh, we are considering. A cumulative uh, density function for continuous random uh, variables uh, can also be plotted and that's the S curve uh, which is uh, often um, uh, the terminology used uh, in industry. Uh, a very interesting observation uh, is that uh, when uh, the standard deviation is reduced, uh, we have uh, uh, less uh, spread in our data. If you look at uh, the PDF on the right hand side, and uh, uh, for the dotted uh, graph, we have a smaller standard deviation, so it is uh, having uh, thinner tails and uh, more contained uh, distribution. Uh, same concept with the S curve or CDF on the left hand side and uh, distribution associated with uh, lower standard deviation which is in dotted lines is more upright and the density of the values around um, uh, mu or mean is uh, more. So uh, random number generation uh, becomes an important uh, aspect of Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, we can uh, use them to uh, simulate the variability and uncertainty of input parameters uh, in our uh, model. There are uh, different ways to generate random numbers. Um, uh, a spreadsheets uh, and uh, Excel uh, in particular, they are convenient for um, uh, communicating your modeling uh, results. However, because simulation has an iterative uh, nature uh, using programming languages such as Python uh, or NumPy package uh, is uh, very convenient uh, for generating random numbers. Uh, other software such as R uh, is also useful in generating random numbers. There are different uh, techniques used in uh, software packages to generate random numbers. The simplest uh, method is probably middle square method and we can start with any number and uh, square that number then take the middle digits uh, of the uh, squared value and use that as the seed uh, for the next uh, iteration. In this uh, case, we can have many uh, random numbers generated. There are more advanced techniques uh, that can be used, such as uh, Latin hypercube sampling or LHAs in um, uh, short. So uh, 
this is very useful uh, when uh, uh, we have uh, uh, complex problems at hand. Uh, there are certain algorithms used in here, and uh, if interested, uh, you are welcome to go in depth uh, uh, learning about uh, such techniques. To our uh, uh, focus uh, of uh, this uh, video, which is using simulation for risk assessment in project management, um, uh, there is a history of using uh, such techniques uh, uh, back to uh, 1980s, the first uh, project uh, specific modeling um, applications were developed and uh, uh, they are continuing to improve and evolve uh, until today. Uh, such uh, simulation based uh, techniques are the basis in many uh, commercial software including uh, Primavera risk analysis uh, which was formerly known as uh, PERTMAST. We can uh, uh, use uh, probability uh, distributions uh, uh, as, uh, for different input variables to our model and then uh, generate random numbers and uh, take samples from the, uh, from the statistical distribution as the representative of the population. And the more is the number of simulations, the more uh, confidence we have in our results. It's important to understand that this is uh, resulting in uh, stochastic uh, values. So such uh, uh, techniques are very useful in uh, modeling uncertainty and especially for uh, scenario analysis. As you can see one example in here which is focused on uh, project costing uh, you can see that um, a base model using Monte Carlo simulation is developed and then uh, we can look into different uh, scenarios, uh, best case scenario, worst case scenario, and uh, compare those. We will uh, have an example. This particular example uh, is um, a mini project uh, with different cost centers including land and buildings and raw materials. And as you can see, uh, the base case is uh, specified, but we want to be more flexible and uh, using uh, probability distributions uh, for those uh, cost centers. As an example for land, we are using a log normal uh, distribution, then the optimistic cost is 1800, pessimistic cost is 2500, and the most likely cost of uh, 2000 is assigned. For other uh, um, cost centers such as buildings, a PERT uh, uh, distribution has been used and uh, we understand that based on the static uh, or non uh, or non stochastic uh, calculations, the base cost of the project is 18,500 but uh, we want to combine those costs under different uh, statistical distributions and find uh, stochastic uh, result. As you can see, uh, it's uh, possible uh, to use uh, random sampling in Monte Carlo simulation and develop uh, the total cost uh, um, distribution, which is a combination of different log normal and pair distributions in this uh, example. Uh, there are insightful uh, descriptive statistics that we can, we can use. As an example, median, uh, which is um, the P50, uh, for our example is 18,724, and uh, you have noticed it is uh, larger than uh, the base uh, cost of 18,500 we had in the deterministic uh, calculations. Other uh, important uh, statistics such as P90 suggest that uh, we are 90% confident that a uh, project can be con uh, concluded uh, with a cost under $19,781. And for 99% uh, uh, confidence, uh, the cost uh, increases to $20,947. Uh, Another uh, 
representation of the stochastic cost uh, can be made using a cumulative density function or the S scale. We can uh, continue uh, uh, going deeper with our analysis and having more interpretations and calculate the sensitivity of the output, which is the total cost in this case, to different input variables uh, such as land, um, IT equipment, and others. There are different benefits that we can achieve uh, by conducting sensitivity analysis. We can find uh, the most impactful uh, variables. Um, we can uh, quantify the level of risk associated with any um, input. Uh, it is very uh, powerful tool in the hands of uh, decision makers. And um, also for scenario analysis, we can define different uh, uh, situations. Back to our example, uh, in uh, uh, the first uh, uh, attempt in uh, uh, our table, we saw that building is the largest cost center and the base case of 5,000. Uh, in a naive approach, we can consider that as the most impactful um, item in terms of total cost, uh, but when we do the sensitivity analysis, we can truly find out which uh, variable is um, the most impactful in terms of uh, uh, introducing variance to the output. And it is not uh, the building, uh, which is the biggest cost center. In our example, raw material is um, uh, appearing to be a, a very sensitive um, uh, and impactful input variable. In other words, our total cost is most sensitive to variations in raw materials uh, when we uh, alter uh, the raw material cost within its range. Uh, the output, which is the total cost, will vary between 18,155 to uh, 19,000. $805. So we can see it's a quite a large range when compared to other uh, input variables such as buildings, which has a very low uh, uh, cost for the output. Here uh, again, uh, uh, we cover uh, parts of uh, risk management uh, standard. Uh, Monte Carlo simulation uh, and uh, sensitivity analysis are related to uh, risk um, assessment uh, procedure in the standard. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. Uh, we will be continuing our uh, discussions on uh, important uh, techniques uh, for uh, risk management in future videos. Thanks for your attention.